first three slides. And then uh, as soon as you give the hint, then I'll, I'll take over and uh, dr drive uh, the rest of the presentation. OK. Don't you want even to say hello? No, definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, let's, let's get started. All right, ready to get started. So uh, I'm here uh, with Whisper VP Strategic Initiatives. I'm going to talk to you about the zoned namespaces and how we're going to enable uh, yeah, the next array application performance. And I'm joined here with Peter Zajcev, CEO of Percona. So P Peter, thank you for, for joining me here. Yeah, so thank you. And hello, everyone. Yes, let's see. Move to the next slide, I guess. Uh, and uh, with that, I just wanted to uh, open the session, to talk a bit about our Percona's uh, experience with uh, SSDs in general. Right? I believe what SSD is one of those major revolutions which happened in the next uh, in the last ten, fifteen years, uh, which really impacted the operational database a lot because they uh, really provide the order of magnitude or, or, or more better performance than in both it comes to the latency and the uh, uh, throughput that you can get uh, get from the storage. So when it comes to operational database, which typically are relatively small but require a lot of performance, uh, they have been moved uh, almost entirely to SSD those days. And it becomes a question of not if you want to go SSD, but which SSD to fix. And here is, I think, we have an uh, interesting challenge because SSDs are this kind of engineering marvels, which include a lot of uh, hardware engineering and very complicated software. So they are much more differentiated than your uh, spinning, um, spinning hard drives. And there is a lot of differentiation here, ranging from you can get uh, uh, performance for reads uh, and writes, and again, as a both throughput and latency, the write endurance, which is something which uh, uh, we don't see as much of uh, hard drives, right? Where if you write a lot of stuff to SSD, can really wear out, you know, uh, pretty quickly, as well as a data safety. Uh, a lot of issues uh, uh, from the corner side, especially when folks would use uh, cons. SSDs, which would not really uh, flash their caches on power failure and do stuff like that, which would cause database corruption and 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 data loss, right? So, a lot of things uh, we are there to think about with SSDs. And another thing to think about is what the most database engines out there, right? And that applies to MySQL, PostgreSQL, even Oracle, right? They were designed in a time of hard drives and were optimized for hard drives. Where, where SSD is really bringing the opportunity for a new decision, new ground up database designs. Yeah, Vin, next slide, please. Yep. So if you uh, think about one of the ground up designs for SSD is the ROXDB. And the ROXDB is the technology which is designed by Facebook for write optimized workloads. And it's used uh, throughout Facebook for in many use cases, as well as integrated with uh, MySQL and uh, storage engine to basically use this storage technology with MySQL uh, database. ROXDB was designed with SSD in mind uh, to begin with, to better performance, better writing compression and also much better write amplification. And what that means is what you would not need as much SSD endurance to be able to handle the same volume of writes. This picture, which I'm showing uh, here, actually comes from uh, one of the presentations uh, Facebook done, where they showed what was their problem with uh, in the DB, right? Where you can see they would not use a lot of uh, CPU or IO capacity, but, and they would use a lot of space. And with Myrox, uh, given at least 2x uh, compression compared to, uh, to uh, 
in a DB, they were able to validate, uh, you know, two to one in their, uh, their impression. And now Myrox uh, is, uh, is, uh, does great and already allowed you to leverage some opportunities of uh, SSD design, but there is a, a way how we can move it even forward and do even better. And that is what Veeam is going to talk to you about. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Peter. Indeed, we, we can do better. Um, I, I'm, I'm very happy to announce here that uh, we as Western Digital are joining forces with, with Bracona uh, to make our latest generation of SSDs, uh, namely the zone namespace SSDs, available for users of Bracona server for MySQL. So, so basically what, what this uh, collaboration is all about is we have developed a, a, a completely new way uh, of, of addressing SSD, which uh, as, as I'll demonstrate, is gonna give you higher performance, lower latency, and then a more capacity out of an SSD. Now, this is all standards-based. Uh, so, so this is based on the, the NVMe standards, nothing uh, proprietary here, uh, but it, it requires uh, software and application integration. So. From our side, uh, we have been working very hard in the open source community to contribute the, the necessary components that are required to use our SSDs through Linux and, and through the application stack. And here today, uh, we, we are joining forces with Procona to make these SSDs specifically available for uh, Procona server for MySQL. So, uh, as Peter alluded to, uh, MyRox is an ideal storage engine for, for optimized for SSDs. Uh, so obviously, uh, we're going to use MyRox as, as a storage engine under MySQL. Uh, and so through Percona, you, you, you can get native support for, uh, for MyRox. And with Percona server for MySQL uh, distribution, we will make this extremely easy to deploy, configure, and, and use. And then you'll be able to get enterprise support from Percona for help with your configurations, performance tuning, and, and so forth. So very glad to uh, to, to partner with Percona to, to make this all available. Now, in my talk, I, I, I'm going to zoom in on uh, some of these aspects here. Uh, so first of all, I'll, I'll introduce uh, zone namespace and then what exactly this is, because it, it is a new type of SSD. Uh, it's going to give you more capacity, higher throughput, and lower latency, and then more predictable latency, which is uh, very important for, for your applications. So I'll explain how zone namespace SSDs are working and, and make you understand how, how we can get to those benefits. Now, Importantly, uh, this this needs to uh, work in lockstep with, with, with the software, and uh, particularly here for the talk today, uh, where we're addressing my SQL. Uh, so I'll talk about the software ecosystem, how, how we've done all these integrations, and then finally I'll, I'll demonstrate or I'll show you some uh, measurements that, that we've done, uh, some performance benchmarks, and how this could lead uh, eventually to cost savings. So bear with, with me that there's there's a lot of information here. I'll, I'll look at the Q&A chat uh, after every section. Uh, so, so if you have questions, please uh, post them in the chat. So let's uh, dive in and, and look at what zone namespace SSDs are, or ZNS SSDs. Now, in order to be able to explain you that, uh, I basically need first need to explain how a, a conventional uh, solid state drive is, is, is operating. And, so basically, uh, when, when we build conventional SSDs, uh, what is inside such an SSD is, is uh, a group uh, or a bundle of NAND chips, uh, memory uh, chips, uh, in, in which we have memory cells where we're going to store the, the bits of data. And then literally, in a single SSD, we, we have tens to sometimes hundreds of NAND chips all bundled together, together in, in one single package. Now, this is all exposed over a, a standard interface. Uh, in, in the early days, the, this, was, this was a SAS uh, interface. Uh, currently, uh, high-performance SSDs are uh, being addressed through an NVMe interface. So uh, NVMe is a protocol over uh, a, a PCIe physical interface. So this gives you the, the highest uh, performance uh, to, to an SSD. Now, to be able to map the incoming data to the, the memory cells, 
Uh, we, we have what we call a controller here. So it's basically a, a chip uh, <clears throat> that controls the SSD. And in that controller, the, the, the software there is, is what we call a flash translation layer. And uh, so the, the main job of the flash translation layer is, is to map the data that is written to uh, logical block addresses. Uh, this is a block device. So uh, applications would be writing to LBAs, uh, logical block addresses. And we're going to map this to physical uh, non-chip memory cell locations. Uh, wherever uh, we, we have memory cells available, we're going to map the new data and, and store it in, in uh, available, mem available memory cells. So there, there is no one-to-one -one relationship between the LBAs and the physical. Basically, uh, the flash translation layer is managing that and then keeping a map of, of what was stored where. Now, th there's one particularity here in an SSD. Uh, that is that these NAND chips, uh, are obviously, those are very dense chips with cells uh, organized on a grid. Uh, and so we, we can write them sequentially in, in uh, 4K or uh, multitudes of 4K blocks. That, that's, that's what you get from the interface. Uh, but then uh, those NAND chips are uh, grouped, let, let, let's say, in what we call erase units. And those erase units need to be erased as one. And, and so typically, in, in like current SSDs, you, you would see your erase units as, as big as a gigabyte. Uh, so basically, that means that we, we cannot erase four kilobytes within an SSD. We, we always need to erase a gigabyte at once to free up space for new data to come in or for, for data that's, uh, that's potentially overwritten. So this is how a conventional SSD is working. Uh, a zone namespace SSD is uh, as, as you can see here from the picture, uh, very similar. Uh, so, so in terms of internal organization, uh, we, we have nine chips organized in, in erase units. Uh, but what is the NS SSD adds to a conventional SSD is that in the NVMe specification, uh, new commands have been added, uh, referred to as uh, zone namespace commands. And these allow applications to address those erase blocks directly. So there's no flash translation layer software here that does the mapping for the application. We basically give the application the, the ability to write directly into uh, those erase blocks. And uh, for a zone namespace SSD, we're, we're going to call those zones. Now, there is one uh, limitation here, and that is the same limitation as the physical device. Those erase blocks uh, or those zones, uh, as they're uh, called in the zone namespace device, need to be written sequentially uh, or appended. And you cannot delete like small chunks of data. You basically need to uh, erase or reset a complete zone at once. So very similar to what uh, a conventional SSD is doing internally through the FTL, but we are giving the application full access and full control over that. So, so why would this be better? Because from the surface, that this might look a, a little bit more complicated. Now, where, where it, get, it gets better is when application starts uh, writing and, uh, to and then using an SSD. Now, in the case of a conventional SSD, typically on top of the FTO, uh, we, 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 we have a file system. And then in the file system, uh, an application like uh, MySQL uh, would be writing in, into multiple files, uh, or you might have multiple databases running in, in, in parallel or uh, concurrent users uh, and so forth. So there's parallelism. Uh, typically, applications write to SSDs with, with parallelism. Uh, and as multiple files are, are, are being written in parallel, uh, this goes through the file system, this goes through the FTL. So basically, the, the SSD has no context anymore of who was writing the data. Uh, at the level of the SSD, we, we get like a big stream of data coming in. And this data is organized in those e e erase units, uh, as explained. Now, what, what you see here is that this data becomes mixed, let, let's say, data from multiple files or from multiple application sources uh, gets mixed in, in erase units uh, because basically th those are being uh, written sequentially. So, so independent from where the data is coming from, it, th th those data gets mixed in, in erase units. And the FTL, the flash translation layer, is keeping track 
of which data is, is stored where. With the zone namespace SSD, as said, uh, through the zone namespace commands, we allow applications to write into zones uh, directly. And so what this means is that as applications are writing into files in parallel, they can open for each and every file, they can open uh, separate zones and, and very, uh, how, how I say, cleanly uh, write and append the data of individual files in, in, in separate zones. And as you can see here, uh, through that uh, zone namespace API, an application is able to write data uh, uh, very nicely separated uh, across zones uh, without intermingling or, or intermixing the data uh, within the SSD. Where, where this becomes important is when data gets deleted or data gets overwritten. Now, uh, and, and this happens a lot, like in, in databases, uh, records are being updated and then so forth. Uh, so, so when updates happen, all data gets deleted. Uh, obviously, uh, that trickles through to, uh, to the SSD. And eventually, we will keep track of data that is obsolete. Uh, we, we will not delete immediately, because that's it. We, we cannot delete individual memory cells uh, within an SSD. We always need to delete full erase units. So the, the flash translator layer is, is going to keep track of which data is obsolete versus which data is, is still in use. Uh, whereas in, in a zone namespace SSD, uh, when uh, a certain file is being deleted, like for instance, uh, file C is deleted in our example here, uh, then we, we can very easily identify where the data blocks are that are associated with that file because the application has nicely written those in uh, zones separate uh, from, from other files. So, Next step is here when, when an SSD is full, uh, because, well, as, as data gets deleted, uh, new data arrives. Uh, obviously, we need to be able to make space for, for the new data that, that arrives. Um, in a conventional SSD, uh, as I said, the FTL is keeping track of obsolete data. And so uh, when the SSD is full, it, it will need to start really erasing or, or deleting erase units. Uh, and in order to do that, first, it needs to evacuate still valid data. And that's what you see happening here. So uh, for that purpose, uh, a conventional SSD always need to keep some free space aside. Uh, and that, that's what we call over-provisioning. So uh, it, it will always keep a, a couple of erase units that, that are free. Uh, because if, for instance, we, we want to uh, clear out the, the two erase units that I'm pointing at here, uh, there is still valid data there from uh, file B, from file A, a and uh, D. So first of all, we need to copy that data aside uh, to uh, an over-provisioned erasing that, that is free uh, before we can do that. And uh, as you can see, this causes additional writes inside the SSD. So, so now even without new data arriving, uh, we need to rewrite data that is already stored in the SSD to, to other locations. Uh, in the ZNS SSD, we don't need to do this. Uh, in the zone namespace SSD, as a file is deleted, we, we can simply go ahead, delete or erase uh, or reset the, the erase units. And now those erase units are readily available uh, to, to receive no data. So this, this process becomes much simpler in a zone namespace SSD. Now, finally, for a conventional SSD, uh, when uh, the, the still valid data has been moved aside, you, you can see uh, that the blocks have been uh, written uh, to uh, a, a, an available erase unit at the bottom here. Uh, only at that time, we, we can clear out these erase units at the top here, and those are now ready to receive new data. Now, this process of having to uh, move data aside, which is basically uh, write or rewrite uh, already existing data in the SSD, causes what we call write amplification. So uh, basically, write amplification is a measure of the, the number of blocks written to the drive, uh, sorry, the number of blocks written within the drive versus the number, number of blocks written to the device by the host. And the number of blocks written inside the device is higher than the number of blocks written uh, by the host, because from time to time, you know, we need to rewrite data to, to move it aside. So, so this is what is referred to as, as write amplification. Uh, 
the zone namespace SSD. As I said, we can, after uh, zones have, have been reset, we can immediately start writing uh, new data to them. So we do not have write amplification in, in zone namespace SSDs. So this is, a, let's say, pretty long explanation to, to demonstrate uh, how zone, zone namespace SSDs work and how they are different from conventional SSDs. And obviously, this leads to several benefits. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, first of all, uh, as I indicated, uh, zone namespace SSDs do not need uh, over-provisioning. Uh, so conventional SSDs uh, will always need to put aside some uh, erase units and, and keep those always free uh, for uh, uh, for, for, for being able to do the, the, the garbage collection, uh, which is moving the data aside. And uh, the amount of over-provisioning is uh, related to how hard you, you want to write to the uh, SSD, so how, how hard you want to stress the SSD. And that is why uh, when you look at the specifications of SSDs now, uh, you'll find SSDs that are uh, specified to uh, 0.8 or about one drive write a day. Uh, so this means that this, this SSD can be overwritten like uh, yeah, 0.8 times a day. Uh, two drive writes a day means that you can stress the SSD harder. Uh, you, you can overwrite the data in the SSD two times a, a day. And so with those numbers, uh, the, the, the uh, SSD is, is guaranteed throughout its, its life cycle. So, so that is basically uh, what these drive writes a day refer to. Now, in order to deliver you an SSD, a conventional SSD that, that can sustain two drive writes a day, uh, more than 25% of the capacity is actually over-provisioned, which means more than 25% is kept free all the time to be able to do the garbage collection and, and to uh, support the full life cycle of the SSD. So an SSD that has let's say, uh, eight terabytes of NAND flash capacity in a two-drive-write-a-day two configuration would only deliver you 6.4 terabytes of usable capacity. And that is what you will see in, in uh, the spec sheets of, of your SSD. A two-drive-write-a-day SSD typically has lower capacity than a 0.8 drive-write-a-day uh, SSD. So this is where, where this is coming from. As said, so namespace SSDs, we, we do not have a garbage collection. Uh, and because of that, we do not need to have over-provisioning, uh, which means that uh, a, a similar SSD uh, in a zone namespace configuration uh, will give you higher capacity. Uh, it will give you the full eight, uh, almost eight or two terabytes of, of raw capacity in, in this example. Uh, and in addition to that, you can, uh, uh, you can drive the SSD harder. Uh, so, so basically, uh, a zone namespace SSD in, in the same configuration will offer 3.5 drive writes uh, per day. So, so you can have a, a harder workload on this SSD, and it's going to sustain that throughout its, uh, its life cycle. Another big benefit is throughput. Uh, you might have noticed uh, when, when using an SSD in, 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 in a MySQL or another uh, application, uh, you might have noticed that at some point the SSD might slow down. Uh, and that's specifically true when the, the SSD is being filled up and the data is uh, overwritten uh, uh, multiple times. What would happen there is, uh, in this chart, uh, what, what I'm demonstrating here is, is three measurements of uh, right throughput uh, for, for an SSD. Uh, the blue line represents a, a zone namespace SSD. Uh, the green line, a two drive write a day uh, conventional SSD, and the orange line, a 0.8 drive write a day conventional SSD. Uh, as you would see, the SSDs, those SSDs are going to perform uh, at the same level uh, as long as they are being written to for, for, uh, for the first time. Uh, so as you will see here that uh, when it, it's a relative number, it's, it's not an absolute number here, uh, but you'll see that these three SSDs are performing uh, at, at the exact same rate until we, we achieve like uh, the equivalent of one full drive write. So 
if, if this is, uh, as you can see here, it happens a little over one terabyte. So this is an SSD that has a little over one terabyte of capacity. As soon as more than one terabyte of data has been written to the SSD, uh, we see garbage collection kicking in. So as we are starting to overwrite data now, uh, the, the garbage collection in the SSD uh, will need to go to the process, which I just explained, like move data aside to free up space for, for new data to come in. And this is measurable. Uh, as the SSD is working hard in the background, moving data aside and then consuming some of its right performance internally, the right performance at the front door, at the NVMe interface goes down. And this is what you as, as a user uh, would be able to measure. So once the SSD has been written full for the first time, uh, you would notice, the, depending on, on the over-provisioning and the drive right today uh, specification of the SSD, uh, you would see that the, the performance could drop uh, ha to, to, to have the original performance or to one-fourth of the original performance depending on uh, the specification of the SSD. Whereas the zone namespace SSD, as I, as I explained, does not have uh, garbage collection and as such uh, does not suffer from performance degradation throughout this life cycle. Uh, with, with, with the two drive right a day, uh, you have the right to write the SSA two times a day, which means overwrite all the data two times a day. So after the first day, basically, for, for this SSD, if you're writing it full at that rate, you could end up in this situation. And uh, throughout the remainder of the life cycle, the SSD, uh, as, as you're overriding data, would be in this steady state. So zone namespace SSDs are, are going to deliver you uh, are going to deliver you higher throughput, certainly in, in those workloads where uh, a lot of data is overwritten and, and the, the SSD is, is used uh, to, to its or close to its full capacity. Now, furthermore, and, and probably even more important for, for database users is, is latency. Uh, and so what, what we're measuring here is, uh, again, two SSDs. Uh, we, we have in blue line a zone namespace SSD. And in orange line, uh, a, a conventional uh, SSD with 7% over provisioning. So, so that would be a, a point A drive right a day uh, SSD. And so we're comparing latency of those SSDs while writes are happening. So the chart is a little bit, uh, uh, how would I say, I need to point out the fact that we are doing, uh, we are measuring read latency while we are writing to the SSD. And, and so the rate at which we are writing to the SSD is uh, on the uh, X axis here in, uh, in the chart. So when we are not writing, but when we are purely reading from the SSD, you see again, those SSDs will perform at their best latency response. So, so you get the lowest latency and they are very comparable. Uh, so basically uh, we, we are comparing apples to apples here. Uh, this is basically the, the same physical SSD, uh, once running with conventional firmware and once running with zone namespace firmware. So these SSDs, uh, when, when they're uh, used in, in like a 100% read scenario, they will give you the same latency. Uh, when we see the, where we see the difference is where we are writing to the SSD. So, so we are writing new data, new records uh, to the SSD. And in parallel, uh, we are reading from the SSD. And so depending on the write load, uh, we, we, we see that a conventional, for a conventional SSD, the latency response time for the reads is quickly going up. So, so your latency response time is getting worse when you're, you're writing to an SSD. Uh, whereas in the zone namespace SSD, because as the zone namespace SSD during writing is a very straightforward process. There's no garbage collection going on or any of that. Uh, latency is going up, but in, in a very linear fashion, a, a very predictable uh, fashion. So here we see that uh, at a certain point, uh, so when we're writing to this SSD, probably this SSD uh, can be written to in, in like a couple of gigabytes uh, a second, uh, but we're writing 400 megabytes a second, and then the remainder of the throughput is used for reading. Uh, in that scenario, you would see that the read latency on a ZNS SSD is 60% lower 
than the read lat latency on a comparable uh, conventional SSD. So very important uh, benefit certainly for uh, well, yeah, transactional applications like, uh, like a database. Now, to make this all available as said, applications need to write through the new NVMe zone namespace standard. And th there's some work there. Um, from Western Digital, we understand that. And for the last couple of years, we have been contributing heavily to make all of this available uh, to the community uh, through, through open source uh, contributions. So first thing we did is uh, we have collaborated very heavily with many other companies on the standard. Uh, because that's, uh, it's important uh, that zone nasus SSDs are not proprietary. Uh, Western Digital is pride uh, to bring first devices to market now, uh, but zone namespace SSDs will also be brought to market from other vendors. Uh, this is an NVMe uh, standard uh, that is uh, uh, endorsed by uh, many storage vendors uh, uh, around the industry. Uh, secondly, uh, zone namespace uh, SSDs, uh, zone namespace SSD is a new uh, type of block device, and so to make this available in, in uh, the Linux ecosystem, we had to contribute the, the necessary uh, components uh, to, to the Linux kernel, and so we've done that for the last two years. Uh, we've been working hard in, in the, the Linux kernel community, uh, and then through several uh, iterations. Uh, we, we can now say that uh, for uh, 5.9 kernels and, and more recent, uh, what I'm explaining here today with zone names and VME zone uh, namespace devices is fully supported in 5.9 and, and more recent uh, kernels. Uh, if you want to read that, uh, uh, read up on that, on what we have contributed and all the tooling we've made available uh, around that. Uh, I, I would invite you to uh, look into our uh, zonestorage.io uh, community space where uh, all, all of this work uh, has, has been documented and where obviously also uh, links to, to the Git, GitHub sources are, are, are available. And now, next step is uh, obviously with the zone block device, uh, this is not the end of the story yet. Uh, we had to make this available to applications. and. Uh, specifically, uh, to make it available to, to uh, MySQL, uh, we looked into the storage engines. Uh, we figured that the, uh, the Rocks DB storage engine is, is the better suited uh, because yeah, we need an application that, that's capable of writing sequentially uh, to, to our storage device. And so as, as Rocks DB has like a, a lock structured data layout underneath, uh, we decided that Rocks DB is the best um, entry uh, for us to uh, make this available to the, the MySQL uh, community. So we've been contributing to, to, to RocksDB. Uh, specifically, we, we contributed what we call a, a ZenFS file system. Uh, so, so it's a, a, a minimal file system uh, that plugs into the RocksDB uh, an, a, a environment infrastructure, uh, and, and through which uh, RocksDB can now write natively uh, to our, our zone block devices. And so also that is uh, documented on, on our zone storage.io uh, space uh, if, if you want to read up on that. And so for today, I'm uh, as I said, very happy uh, to announce that we're joining forces with Procurna to make this all uh, available in, in one easy to use package, which is a uh, Procurna server for MySQL. Um, uh, for us, it, it was a, a very natural decision to, to reach out and, and to work with Procona, as uh, Procona is obviously uh, the company that, that supports uh, MyRox as, uh, as a storage engine for, uh, for MySQL. And so through the contributions that, that, that we've done, uh, as I said, Zenavez is plugged into RocksDB. Uh, RocksDB can then be used in uh, its, its MyRox form as, as a storage engine for, for uh, MySQL. And now by bundling this all together uh, with, with Procona into Procona Server for MySQL, uh, we will be able to uh, deliver you uh, and then yeah, easy to use uh, and then easy to install package. Uh, and, and obviously through that, you, you will also be able to get uh, support from, from Procona for 
uh, installing, configuring, and then performance tuning this, this whole configuration on, on top of our uh, Zen namespace uh, SSDs. Now, I want to share some of the early benchmarks that, that, that we've done. Um, and so I, I have to say that these are detailed benchmarks that, that we've run at, at Western Digital. Uh, as I said, we're joining forces with Procona. Uh, so I, I'm encouraging Procona to, to, uh, to run their own benchmarks and then to publish blog posts on, uh, on those as we progress, uh, which I'm, I'm sure will, will happen. Uh, so the results I'm sharing now are from our uh, Western Digital and internal benchmarks uh, for now, as uh, that's the data that, that, we, that we have currently available. So, so what we've done here is uh, we have run uh, MySQL in several configurations. Uh, we, we've run MySQL in its default uh, configuration on, on InnoDB, on XFS uh, file system on, on a conventional SSD. Uh, then we compared this uh, to uh, MySQL running on, on Rocksby, so basically running on MyRox on a conventional SSD. Uh, and then we compared this, uh, thirdly, to, to MySQL uh, running on uh, MyRox with our ZNFS file system running on a zone namespace SSD. So, so the, those are the three comparisons that, that we've done here. And, yeah, so the three colored bars that you see here are, are representing those. So uh, first is uh, InnoDB, uh, second is uh, MyRox on a conventional SSD. Uh, the blue bar is MyRox running on ZNFS on a uh, zone namespace SSD. And so the, the first thing that we see, oh, uh, uh, one step further, the, the benchmarks that we've run are the, the, the standard sysbench uh, bench, benchmarks. And so we uh, we ran the read only, the write only, and the read write benchmarks. Uh, so so basically, uh, read only is just basically read heavy, write only is uh, write heavy, and so forth. Uh, and and th those are the standard sys bench benchmarks. So you you can read up on uh, what exact wh which transactions are, or, or what what uh, commands those transactions are, are composed of. Now what. what What's interesting here is that, well, first of all, uh, let's say for the read-only, well, we, we, we all know that RocksDB and MyRox is targeting workloads that have a write component to them. Uh, and, and so on, on the conventional SSD, that, that's also what you see happening here. Uh, InnoDB versus MyRox in, in a read-only re use case, InnoDB definitely wins. Uh, whereas uh, for uh, if you run my in, in a write-only use case, if you compare uh, InnoDB versus MyRox in a write-only use case, uh, MyRox uh, definitely wins. So that is to be expected. That's those are uh, I, I think the results uh, similar to what Peter showed in the introduction. And uh, for those of you who have uh, uh, tried out uh, MyRox, uh, would have been able to measure. Now, what's interesting here, uh, also our ZNS, our Zone Namespace SSDs, uh, as I uh, demonstrated earlier, work particularly well if you're writing to the SSD in combination with reading. And, and so e even with like a minimum write factor, uh, we already see those benefits. And that, that's, that's what we're seeing here in the, in the blue charts. Um, so if we compare, uh, for instance, uh, my, MySQL running on InnoDB on a conventional SSD versus MySQL running on MyRox with a uh, zone namespace SSD, in a write heavy use case, we measured up to three to three times higher throughput, which means we, we are completing three to three times more transactions per second on otherwise the, the same server, the, the same configuration. So that is a very significant benefit and that has uh, everything, to, everything to do with, well, first of all, using MyRox, which gives uh, a software benefit uh, in, in write heavy use cases. And then in addition, the zone namespace SSD, which works particularly well with, with MyRox in, in a write heavy use case. So that is, let's say, the best case result. Uh, what you still see here is that in, in mixed read write uh, use cases, where uh, InnoDB and MyRox are performing like close to on par uh, because there there is a mix of reads and writes uh, going on. 
then still uh, running my rocks on the zone namespace SSD gives you uh, about yeah, 60 percent higher transaction per second rate uh, on on the zone namespace SSD. So it's also there even in uh, let's say 50-50 uh, mix read write configuration, you still get a very significant performance benefit from uh, using zone namespace SSDs. Uh, and, and going back to the read-only use case, probably you wouldn't use it for that. Uh, but you see that running MyRox is getting pretty close in, in performance uh, to, to running NODB. So uh, there again, very nice result. Now, as we said, uh, running database applications, uh, it, for running database applications, latency and latency predictability is, is important. Uh, so during those tests, we, we've also measured uh, the latencies on, on the transactions. And so uh, for, the, for the average latencies, obviously, you see very similar results to uh, the transaction throughput uh, results. Uh, what's more important here is the, the, the 95th percentile measurements, uh, because this, this is a good measure of like the predictability of, uh, of the latency. Uh, so 95% of the transactions are in that, uh, in that uh, or 95 percent of the faster transactions are, are in that measurement. Uh, and here again, for, for the right only use case to, to call out that result, uh, we see that uh, for, for the 95th percentile, uh, the transactions were completing almost seven times well, with almost seven times lower latency uh, compared to running the same workload on uh, a server configured with NODB. So also there, in terms of uh, latency predictability, we see a very significant uh, benefit. Similarly, uh, well, or a similar result what was seen for uh, the read-write use case. Uh, we, we even had to break off the bar. Uh, because it would uh, fall off my, my graph here. So uh, very significant uh, performance benefits uh, specifically for, uh, for running uh, MySQL uh, uh, workloads. And so this could potentially lead to uh, a very significant cost saving for you. Now, if, for instance, you are in a situation where uh, you want to run a, a large database infrastructure and, and your targets for the database infrastructure are as follows. Uh, you want to run a million transactions per second uh, as performance target, and that is across like a data set of, of about a petabyte. So, so we're targeting pretty large uh, infrastructure here. Um, if, if we would build this out of like a, a sharded cluster of uh, uh, MySQL databases running on conventional SSDs, uh, we know from the previous chart uh, that well, a conventional SSD typically would, would deliver you like uh, 3,000 transactions per second in, uh, in that right heavy use case that uh, I was alluding to on uh, the previous slide. So, so here, uh, server A, uh, we're running MySQL on NODB on the conventional SSD, 3,000 transactions per second. Uh, as demonstrated on performance results from the previous slide, uh, a similar server running on the zone namespace SSD would be able uh, to uh, to run at 10,000 uh, transactions per second. Um, and, and that's actually the result that, that we measured uh, in, in the previous slide. So this is, uh, as I said, three to three times faster or three to three times more transactions per second when running this configuration on my rocks on, on the zone namespace SSD. So how, how would this lead to cost savings? Well, uh, if we want to build this infrastructure for a million transactions per second and one petabyte, uh, with 3,000 transactions per second, I need about 300 servers. Uh, for one petabyte, also about 300 servers. So I could use a, a 3.8 terabyte capacity SSD here. And at the right-hand side, with 10,000 transactions per second, I need about 100 servers to, uh, to get to the million transactions per second. So I could use an 8 terabyte SSD, which is uh, well, what is uh, what's going to be available to, to meet my one petabyte uh, capacity target at the right-hand side. And so building out this infrastructure uh, to get to this uh, target, uh, I would have to deploy a 330 uh, MySQL server instances uh, to, to get to, to my uh, targets there. Whereas with the zone namespace SSD, uh, I would only need like a, a 128 server instances uh, to get to 
the same uh, performance and, and capacity target. So, so essentially, this infrastructure, so simply based on infrastructure costs, uh, it gives you like a 62% uh, saving. Uh, and in addition to that, we, we could do a total cost calculation uh, based on, on, on these results. Uh, so concluding here, uh, our Zoom namespace SSDs uh, can deliver you many benefits. As, as we touched on, uh, Zoom namespace SSDs for, for MySQL environments, uh, can deliver you up to three times higher tran uh, transaction per second performance and uh, up to six times uh, reduced uh, transaction latencies. Uh, certainly for uh, those use cases with uh, heavy write uh, component to them. Um, also, uh, Zonasius SSDs uh, will deliver you higher capacity or you could translate this uh, to, to like a, a, a lower dollar cost per uh, usable capacity. Uh, and it gives you higher endurance, so, so you can uh, run those SSDs uh, with, with yeah, heavier uh, workloads. Uh, as indicated, and, and very importantly, this is all based on industry standards and open source. Uh, and as uh, we, we are uh, joining forces with Procona to make this available uh, in Procona Server for MySQL, uh, such so that you can get enterprise support around this uh, full stack offering. Uh, and as I demonstrated in the last slide, this could lead to very significant uh, total cost of ownership uh, savings. And so we would be happy to do the calculation for you in, in uh, your environment. Uh, so with that, uh, concluding it here, uh, we, we are making CNS available for the next era in uh, application performance. Uh, with regards to the solution availability, uh, we are now open uh, to, to a select number of uh, qualification customers. Uh, so so we, we are reaching out to customers that are uh, willing to work with us to, to qualify the solutions now. Uh, we're looking into like a general availability of both the devices and uh, the Procona server solution uh, later uh, in, in the year. Uh, and then also, yeah, we, we are, uh, I've been focusing a lot of, uh, on, on MySQL uh, but obviously, we were looking into expanding this to uh, other uh, databases and ex applications as well. And so we'll we'll update you at uh, availability availability times of, of those. Uh, I've included a couple of links here uh, where you can get more information and more data. Uh, so the more commercial information is on our zone storage uh, pages on the Western Digital website. Uh, the community site, where, where you will find all the sources and the contributions, is uh, zonestorage.io. Uh, and if you're interested and uh, want to get in touch with us, uh, please use the zones, uh, zone storage at westerndigital.com email alias, uh, where I'm involved and, and many of my colleagues to, to answer uh, your questions. So with that, I quickly going to ch check here. I, I didn't see questions in the Q&A. So I quickly, oh. There are some questions here in the general session. Uh, so there was one question, what about durability? Uh, so, so indeed, uh, as indicated, uh, the durability of the zone namespace device is higher. Uh, we, we, we support a three and a half drive rights a day, whereas uh, conventional SSDs typically have a maximum of two drive rights a day. Uh, so there's a question about wear leveling. So yeah, basically uh, wear leveling or uh, garbage collection. So so th this is basically the difference. A, a conventional SSD uh, will have uh, two drive rights a day. Uh, so so the wear leveling of, of the cells inside the SSD are accounted for, uh, and then that's why we we keeping uh, certain cells aside uh, for for when. Uh, certain cells would die, then, then still we, we always have spare capacity there to, to handle that. So, so that's the wear leveling in, in a conventional SSD. Uh, also in our zone namespace SSD, uh, we, we, we're taking this into account, uh, but as uh, the, those cells are, uh, uh, or as, as through the zone namespace uh, API, uh, the application would be writer in, in a more friendly way to the SSD, uh, we, we need to have far less uh, extra capacity there to, uh, 
to take care of the wear leveling. So basically, it's not something you, you should be worried of. Uh, this is handled inside the SSD. And so we guarantee the SSD for uh, 3.5 drive writes a day throughout this life cycle. And, and so there, there's sufficient extra cell capacity there to, to handle uh, wear leveling if, if it so would happen. There's one question about throughput. Uh, I need to read it in detail. Uh, wouldn't this significantly decrease the sequential read-write speed uh, per thread uh, since a continuous file has to be read from the same zone? Uh, I, I, I would say quite the opposite. Uh, so for reads, uh, as, as a reading from those SSDs is, is, is very similar. Uh, uh, SSDs are extremely fast uh, when it comes to read performance and, and, and latency, and they, they're performing at, at about this, the same rate. Uh, really where the difference is with the zone namespace SSD is if, if writes are added to, to the workload. Uh, because a conventional SSD, when, when new writes come in, certainly when the SSD uh, ha has been written full for the first time, uh, when new writes come in, garbage collection in the background needs to continuously work to, to make space available for, for the, those new writes co to come in. So in a conventional SSD, uh, the performance will degrade because of those background processes. In a zone namespace SSD, we don't have these background processes. Uh, so, so basically, the application opens a zone, writes to the zones or, or appends. That there's also a write append mode. Uh, the application writes to the zone, and then at the end of the zone, you close it, you open another one, and, and so forth. Uh, and multiple zones uh, can, can be opened in, in parallel. Uh, in the specific SSD that I was referring to, the ZN 540, uh, for instance, 14 zones can be uh, opened in parallel. Uh, and, and so actually, this works better for multi-tenancy. Uh, as, as, the, as the writes are segregated, uh, the, the SSD has more capability of optimizing uh, the writes towards the erase blocks uh, through, through its in internal structure. So, so namespace SSDs just simply handle writes better than, than conventional SSDs. Besides RobDB, wouldn't uh, OLAP systems doing large sequential writes automatically lever, lever leverage this type of SSD uh, on a more Linux distro. Uh, so, it, yeah, uh, that's correct. So, so, so systems doing large sequential writes are ideal systems for, for us. Uh, as said, this is in addition to, to the uh, NVMe standard. Uh, so, uh, what, what needs to be done there is uh, certainly for uh, for today, uh, applications need to be modified to, to write uh, according to the new uh, NVMe commands. Uh, we are also contributing to uh, more general purpose Linux file systems, uh, namely ButterFS. Uh, so, so we, we are working and contributing to, to ButterFS. Uh, to make, make more general purpose file systems compatible with, with zone namespace, and then uh, those uh, OLTP systems uh, could be writing to them natively with, without modifications. Let's see how, how many we have left. We still have a couple of minutes, so, so we can go on. OK, there's a question. If I write a 100 gigabyte file and read it sequentially, no matter how big it is, the read block size, not no matter how big the read block size is, I will be limited by individual NAND die speed. Uh, and, and that's correct. Uh, so, so, yeah, uh, re reiterating, we, we're, we're not optimizing for reads. Uh, and then, Maybe to your question, you don't even need to read sequentially for from a zone namespace SSD. Uh, so uh, conventional SSD, zone namespace SSD, uh, reads are very similar, reads are very fast. 
where the difference is, is when reads are happening during writes. <laughs> in conventional SAD, when you're reading while writing is going on, uh, then your read performance uh, will, uh, uh, will, will degrade and your, your read latency will, uh, will increase. There's a question about SAN storage uh, with zones namespace disks. Uh, not at this point. Uh, and that is obviously something that has been worked on and uh, I expect to, to come to the market uh, at a later time. Uh, one more uh, would be interesting to see benchmark where the SDD are behind the power for rate controller. Rate controllers make uh, writes as fast as Intel Optane uh, for, for reuse scenarios. Yeah. Um, so maybe the discussion we, we, we need to have. What, what we see is uh, in, in, in VME, uh, rate controllers are, are used less uh, because uh, rate, rate controllers were used in, in, in the past for more for, for SaaS devices and certainly for hard disks to yeah, bundle devices to, to achieve higher throughputs. Uh, as you would see, a, a single NVMe SSD already delivers such a high throughput uh, that sometimes it, it, it's, it's difficult with, with a single MySQL server instance to, to drive a, a single SSD to, to its full performance. So uh, with regards to performance, what we, what we see very regularly is, is that the MySQL instance is, is run on uh, a single NVMe instance, and then you know, many of those instances are, are clustered uh, in, in a sharded configuration. It's an interesting question. Uh, at, at this point, I, I don't know of uh, rate controllers that, that support uh, zone namespace. Uh, even more, uh, there are very few rate control solutions that, that support NVMe today. OK, and there's one question about the specific configuration here. So I, I, I think we would love to follow up with you, uh, Sergio, on, on your configuration. Wow, you're getting a lot of questions, lots of engagement. Yeah, it's good. Thank, thank, thank you guys for that. It's unfortunately, we, we, we cannot talk <laughs> bi-directionally. But th thanks for all the questions in the chat. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to close the session here with the top of the hour. Uh, thanks, Peter, for, for hosting me. Do you have any final comments? Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for attending. All right. Thank you all, guys. I'll hang out a little bit here uh, if you have more questions. Mm -hmm.